Her name is Pearl. She has never seen a baby elephant. But on this night, Pearl will give birth to one. Baby's legs dangle in full view as Pearl squirms and gyrates in the final moments of her three-hour labor. The baby falls to the floor. Like a doctor's life-giving spank, the impact helps to clear the mouth and lungs. The baby is breathing and healthy. Pearl's 21-month pregnancy is over. Draped by what's left of the amniotic sac, there lies before her a 275-pound baby, a baby boy who will be named Raja. Good evening, I'm Mary Phelan. What you just saw is extremely rare. Only in a handful of zoos in North America have they ever witnessed the birth of a baby elephant. Raja is the first here in the St. Louis Zoo, and as you can imagine, he's drawing a lot of attention and a lot of cameras. He's undeniably cute, but Raja is also important, not only to the St. Louis Zoo, but to other zoos throughout the country, and even to the effort to save Asian elephants in the wild. You'll find out why tonight. We also hope to give you information which will make your next visit to see Raja more enjoyable. Coming up, a close-up look at the new baby. Raja's story is next. aren't you? You are such a cutie. Raja is an Asian elephant, and like all elephants, he loves water. Feels pretty good, doesn't it, guy, huh? Mm, yeah, flap those ears. The water helps to regulate his body temperature, which is normally about the same as ours. But Raja's real motivation is simple. Water is fun. Mm, it sounds like those little Asian elephants, man. They go right through the water. Every day is a learning experience for Raja and his keepers alike. They've never had a baby elephant here, and some of his antics have caught them off guard. That's time for bait. Good bait, Meister. Witness one of the first times they tried to get him on a platform scale <laughs> to weigh him. Step up, that's right. Good boy. Easy. It's all right. He just runs all over the place and just plows through anything that happens to be in his way. Uh, even at birth, this animal weighed 275 pounds, and it's like a little tank. That's one of his first no's. It's like, no, you don't run over me. No, you can't push me. That's against the rules. The keepers don't mind facing this early problem. They know Raja will learn in time. They're just happy to have a baby elephant. For many years, it seemed like that might never happen. Just as they do today, the St. Louis Zoo had many rare animals 15 years ago. But the zoo didn't have a baby elephant. Obviously, uh, we, would, we wanted baby elephants all along. But uh, our original elephant house, the one that exists today, would simply not allow us to house a, a bull elephant here. It isn't uh, strong enough. It isn't safe enough for us to do that. You can see this beam that's on the ceiling over here was a uh, concession we made to the last bull we had here back in 1972. He was actually pushing the cage front out. So uh, uh, there's that consideration. But beyond that, bull elephants are extremely unpredictable animals. The zoo researched elephant reproduction for several years. They even tested each member of the herd to determine their viability. And meanwhile, we learned about a bull elephant in Springfield where they were able to collect semen. So we began shipping semen from Springfield by Greyhound bus and uh, inserting into our females after we studied our females and knew when they were cycle and when they would be most likely to be receptive. They tried artificial insemination for two years, but just as other zoos had experienced before them, the procedures failed. They then shifted focus to natural birth. 
it was decided that Pearl and Carolyn would be trucked to Dickerson Park Zoo in Springfield, Missouri. Our animals, of course, had never done anything like that before. And one difference between human and animals is you can't explain to the animal what's happening to them. Your average truck driver, he likes a load that doesn't shift. Well, you can't make a six, 7,000 pound animal stand completely still for a 180 mile drive down to Springfield. But the trip was uneventful. The two females were introduced to Onyx, one of the four largest bull elephants in captivity. If you had Onyx standing up next to uh, Pearl right now, or if Onyx was in the same position where Pearl is, you would not be able to see the top of the, uh, the doors. His back would be as high as these doors are. When Pearl and Carolyn came back to St. Louis, they were closely monitored. In the case, what we had with these two elephants, Carolyn uh, actually uh, had a rise in progesterone and stayed up there uh, quite a bit earlier than, than Pearl. And we were convinced that she was pregnant, and we weren't convinced that Pearl was pregnant at first. But Carolyn later showed clear signs that she was not pregnant. Apparently, she had gone through a false pregnancy, never before documented in elephant research. Meanwhile, Pearl's chart showed she was carrying a baby. Cameras were mounted in the pen to observe how the rest of the herd would react to the pregnancy. The most surprising thing that we saw was uh, that Carolyn, one of our 26-year-old female here, uh, was uh, showing, uh, was basically picking on Pearl almost on a daily basis. And it was usually sometime between maybe 8 and 10 o'clock in the, uh, the evening. And uh, she would just initially just kind of walk up to Pearl and eat in her hay and just kind of push her, or push her, and then push her a little again, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. And then eventually she, and Pearl would always give way. Whenever Carolyn pushed, Pearl would step back, which basically shows that Carolyn is over Pearl in the, uh, the hierarchy status. When Carolyn was starting to get into that mode of being pushy with uh, Pearl, Clara would step in, walk right in between Carolyn and Pearl, and just break it up. And it's like, no, not tonight, girls. You know, I'm not going to tolerate it type of a thing. Pearl gained 1,700 pounds during her pregnancy. She ate everything in sight. Her daily intake of 55,000 calories didn't seem to be enough for her. When her progesterone level changed abruptly, keepers held a 24-hour watch, knowing she would soon go into labor. After two days, nothing much had changed. Bill Houston took his turn at watch at 5.30 early Saturday evening. There wasn't a lot going on, sat down at the monitor, and almost immediately at 6 o'clock, she, she just, boom, went into labor. And uh, <laughs> A few people we couldn't get a hold of. They weren't home. They were at parties. Uh, phones were busy. The vets weren't there. And it's just like, you know, somebody's got to come here and help me. And it was a scramble <laughs> to get everybody on the phone and get them here in time. Uh, but everybody, you know, we got them here just in the nick of time, and everything worked out well. Here it comes. During contractions, Pearl would sometimes bend down, her head on the floor, and push against the concrete. She went through a lot of uh, very exaggerated motions, you know, through the labor and the, the pain of it all. She didn't really make any noise during it all, but her uh, motions were extremely exaggerated. At 9.18 p.m., Pearl delivered the baby. She stepped on him within moments of birth and then moved as far away as she could. We had been reviewing videotapes in preparation for this birth uh, from a number of different zoos and expected to see some kicking of the baby, some stepping on the baby. That, that's perfectly normal. That's how elephants try and coax the baby into getting up. And her initial reaction, she, the baby popped out. Uh, she kicked it free from underneath her feet. She stepped aside completely and kind of looked at it. You could tell she was unsure of what that was. 20 minutes later, the baby grunted, and Pearl moved quickly toward him, stepping on him and then violently pushing him. About 20, 25 minutes after the birth, we had to pull the baby away from her uh, because she really uh, started getting on it and, and uh, actually trying to physically hurt it. The baby was not injured, but it was obvious that the two would need to be separated for the moment. Pearl's rejection of Raja was the keeper's greatest fear. Only once in history had an elephant been hand-raised from birth. All other attempts had failed. But in those first hours, it looked like there might not be a choice.
Raja was only 30 minutes old and already trying to walk. Pearl watched these first attempts from a distance. When she did get close, she showed clear signs of rejecting the newborn. And our big worry was, gosh, I hope we don't have to hand raise this thing. We've got to do everything we can to get Pearl and this baby back together and, and teach Pearl what it is to be a mother. We hope that the imprinting that takes place between the mother and, and baby uh, would occur and that he would be imprinted on her and not on, on uh, his keepers. Gradually, Pearl's aggressive behavior decreased through the night. Good girl. By morning, Pearl had gone through an amazing turnaround. She was beginning to accept the baby. The next hurdle would be getting baby to nurse from mother. Pearl seemed willing, but the baby was not. After about 20 hours, we noticed he was losing, he still hadn't nursed, and he was losing condition, losing weight. Uh, we knew that we had to get some nourishment into him. First, the baby received intravenous transfusions of plasma collected from Pearl, plasma rich in infection-fighting antibodies. Second, a call was made to the maternity ward at Deaconess Hospital to request a breast pump for an elephant. And the nurse came up to me and she said, we got the strangest call from the zoo. Um, and she explained what it had uh, been about. And I began thinking about it as I walked to my office and I thought, doggone it, I'm just going to give them a call and see if I can offer some assistance. So before I knew it, I was over at the zoo, uh, standing side by side to an elephant. <laughs> it was different, I'll tell you. I, I heard them talking about we were going to have to milk her. And I thought, well, we're going to go in her and milk her like a cow, you know. And then this, uh, Young lady from Deaconess comes over with the machine and everything, and it's like, what the heck is this? The keeper squatted beneath a 6,500-pound animal to fill the bottles for Raja. Pearl calmly cooperated. But we were uh, collecting the milk from her and then, you know, putting it in a bottle, and he'd come over, and we'd start feeding him and, uh, you know, bring him up underneath her. So we were always trying to get him to nurse, uh, at least nurse off the bottle right next to her, you know, udder. So uh, eventually he just kind of switched, uh, switched bottles. <laughs> he actually latched on for the first time at 3 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day. I'm sure in the wild, um, elephants uh, have role models, you know, they see other elephants with, with infant elephants, and um, it's a lot more familiar to them than probably, you know, Pearl's situation. So uh, she just needed a little bit of help uh, to, uh, in, in the transition into parenthood. That night, when the keepers saw this, they had no doubt the mother-baby bonding was complete. Isn't that great? In only a few days, mother and son had bonded better than anyone could have expected. But with the rest of the herd out of view, Pearl showed signs of separation anxiety. She's been separated for about a week and a half, and she has this immense torn feeling within herself of, I want to be back with my herd mates and my friends, yet I know I can't leave my calf, and they aren't sure about my calf, and so I can't take my calf over to them. And so she's doing a lot of displacement behavior, or, which is a direct result of a conflict. Cautiously, keepers began introducing Raja to the rest of his extended family. First, he would meet Clara, the matriarch of the herd. When we first opened up the uh, solid door today, the baby immediately went on over there, put a, uh, his trunk out through it, you know, to, you know, it's like, oh, what's that? There's, there's another one, too, you know. Clara has a history of accepting calves, but it's been 20 years since she's seen one. She'll go up to the bars and she'll, you know, hit the howdy gate once in a while. Uh, but she never does it, you know, he'll be right you know, so kind of like that. You know, he'll be, he could be right there and she won't, uh, won't hurt him or anything. 
soon the gate was open and all three stood side by side. If not for the baby's poor eyesight, it would have been an uneventful first meeting. There have been a, a couple of times now where the baby uh, got confused about who mom was and ran to the first large gray object he saw, and that happened to be Clara, and uh, Clara sent a clear signal that I'm not quite ready for this kind of familial relationship yet. Next, Marie, a lethargic 46-year-old, would meet Raja. And for the first 10, 15 minutes, she was standing right next to the, on the other side of the gate. Uh, Clara was there, Pearl was there, Raja was walking in between those two. Trunk was reaching through the bars to Marie, touch, almost touching it within inches. And there was no reaction with, from Marie whatsoever. It's like, well, this is going great, you know. And uh, it was a better introduction than what Clara went through. And uh, about 15 minutes after we brought Marie over into the stall and opened up all the doors, all of a sudden she just went, Brrr! you know, she backed up all the way to the other side of the stall. She let out a big scream and uh, holler. And it's just like it finally realized, you know, in her head that there was something new on the other side of that, uh, of the bars, and it just finally clicked. There are more introductions to be made over the next several weeks. Carolyn and Donna have yet to meet the newcomer. In time, the entire herd will help in child rearing, as if they were all aunties and Raja an adopted nephew. Raja's life will be anything but solitary. On his first open house, he had more than 10,000 visitors. Raja didn't disappoint them. Oh, that's great. It's an experience. I mean, it's, a, it's an event, no doubt about it. Oh, he's darling. I've been following Pearl through the whole pregnancy. I, was, I come every week. I can't imagine a frisky baby elephant. It is really cute. I thought he was adorable. I really did. I'm glad I got pictures of him because he's going to gain weight real fast. I wouldn't miss it for anything, and I'll be here watching him grow up. He is adorable. His public didn't know it, but only an hour before the doors were open, Raja was a mess. The cage bars had just been given a fresh coat of paint, and Raja had closely inspected it. And so it was still a little bit runny, but we didn't realize it at the time. And when we came over to get ready to start cleaning the calf, we noticed that his name might have should have been Jade because he was totally green and just caked all over. And so as we were going through our cleaning routine and we're getting ready to open the building, we go over and look at him. And there he is coated with paint from head to toe. So it took us about 35 minutes just to scrub it all off and get him semi-clean again. And then we had to go get the paint back off the door so he didn't spend that day being green all day. But this will not be Raja's permanent home. Something bigger and better is in his future. More on that when we continue. Raja is well adjusted. He knows he's safe with mom. He likes to play with his keepers. He even seems to like the crowds. But a major change is in his future. A change for the better. This will not be Raja's permanent home. Zoo officials say it's just not adequate for a bull elephant once he becomes about seven years old. They say he'll simply become too dangerous to handle in this facility. But plans are in the works for a new and safer home for Raja here at the St. Louis Zoo. Not only are we planning a new facility, but there'll be eight or ten other major zoos in North America that will be planning the appropriate facility that we can manage a number of males and a number of females with planned propagation programs so that our descendants two and three generations from now can enjoy elephants in the zoo. A new elephant house for the St. Louis Zoo is only in the preliminary planning stages, but the new facility will likely include a device called the crush, which will make handling Raja a safer duty. We can actually um, place an elephant in this chute and, uh, and bring the sides together so that the animal is somewhat confined and then open portions of the chute so that we can get to the elephant, touch it in various areas, but do it safely without any harm to the keeper. Um, it's also been s s developed so that the elephant can actually be tilted on its side so that the animal will be laying on its side, which will allow us access to the underside of the feet of the animal. And we have to continually work with the animal's feet because in the wild they travel many, many miles and here they're more sedentary. Um, we have to work on it, oil them up, do a little work on it and trimming. And uh, this lets us do that safely. It, it restrains the animal, but doesn't harm it in any way. When the animal's tilted back up on its feet, we kind of gradually release everything, goes on its way, and we'll go right back in the chute the next day without a problem. Most zoos don't have a crush, and consequently, they don't house bull elephants because of safety concerns. It can be dangerous, yeah. Uh, let's, let's face it, they kind of outweigh us by a couple of pounds, and if, if they got worked up about something or uh, something scares them, 
they could uh, they could do some damage. Salute. That's right. Good girl, steady. Just like mother, son will take verbal commands from his keepers one day. Come on. He will grow large tusks without fear of ivory poachers. At about two to three months of age, we'll probably begin erupting a small pair of milk tusks, and he'll have those for about a year, and then those will fall out, and then he'll start growing his real tusks. And he'll become more adept at using the most versatile and unique feature of an elephant, his trunk. This little area right here, it's what we call the finger. And it's probably the, of his whole, his whole body, that's my favorite part of him. Because it feels like a little baby's finger. Sometimes Raja uses his trunk as a toy. He's learned how to blow bubbles in the bathtub. He also uses it like a pacifier. And he d was doing that almost uh, at day two, where he'd be kind of sticking it in there. But it would it'd kind of fall back out real quick. He never really had, like I say, the muscle control to keep it in his mouth and, and to play around inside his mouth. Raja is important not only to the St. Louis Zoo, but to all zoos because he is such a good research subject. They will study his diet, his development, even the way he communicates. Sometimes when you think the elephants are being quiet, they might actually be communicating quite loudly with one another. Now, not only do they speak in the audible grunts and squeals that we can hear, but also in very low frequency noises, which we can't hear at all. It's known as infrasound. A lot of times what you'll see when they are communicating in that way, the forehead up here vibrates. And you can see it vibrate, but you can't hear anything. You can almost feel it. Researchers have wondered whether baby elephants can communicate in infrasound, but it's never been documented. Raja and Pearl might have answered that question. We have seen circumstances between the two where it's pretty unquestionable that he has at least been able to make a basic distress cry using infrasound that she's been able to pick up. The Asian elephant is highly endangered, only about 25,000 to remain in the wild. The information gained from Raja's birth might one day benefit those wild animals as well. Zoos are looked upon as, as arcs of salvation. Should their territory be eliminated, that uh, uh, we would still have them uh, in captivity, and uh, they could then potentially even be reintroduced back into the wild. When you have a birth like this, it just absolutely reinforces all of that and gets everyone excited and interested again and shows you that you're on the right track and how special all these animals are. So for that reason alone, the birth is terribly important to us. We thought we'd have a good response, but we did not expect the tremendous amount of response that we had. Letters, phone calls, uh, so much excitement throughout the community, but not just in St. Louis, but within 100 miles in every direction. We got response and people very excited about it. It's a community event. It's not a zoo event, a total community event. Raja is much like Miss Jim the Elephant and Phil the Gorilla in generations past. Raja will be special to a whole new generation. They will watch him grow and grow along with him. And in that sense, Raja's story is just beginning. <laughs>